Well, Wednesday's coming up again. It's time to take a look at which comic books are coming out so I can tell you what I'm getting. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Uh, on this channel, I talk comic books, I do unboxings, reviews, haul videos, and I even preview each week's upcoming solicitations. So if you're interested in that type of content, hit the subscribe button, then hit that bell icon. That way you're notified whenever new videos of mine go live. Uh, now, this is a series I like to call What I'm Getting, and if it's not your first time here, then you know I'm trying to cut down my pull list. I'm trying to get back to a normal budget level, quit overspending, quit uh, buying more books than I have time to read. So this week is stacked. This is a stacked new comic book week, and in order to get the books that I really want, I'm going to have to cut some books that I don't want as much. So it's time to take a look at what's coming out. And I like to start with the book that I am most excited for. That was actually pretty difficult of a decision to make this week. Uh, but we're starting off with Superman, Son of Kal-El, number one. Uh, this is Tom Taylor's brand new Superman series focused on John Kent. Um, I got to read a short preview that Tom posted to social media. It looks like we're going to be retelling a story from John's perspective. Uh, you're getting the story of his birth and that's really, it was literally like a one page preview. So it's interesting. Uh, I love the family aspect of the Superman titles as of late. Tom Taylor writes family very well. He writes characters in a way that makes you care because they care about each other. So I'm excited to see um, how fun this series is going to end up being. Tom Taylor does uh, pulling at the heartstrings well. He does humor well. He does family well. Um, and so I think this is going to be a pretty good series. So Superman, Son of Kal-El, number one, has a cover price. Everywhere has got it listed at $3.99. So that's what I'm going to stick with, even though most DC number ones are $4.99 right now. But um, it's got a cover price of $3.99, and I'm just going to get the cover A, that nice homage. Now, since we're talking about DC Comics, let's just kick on down the list. Now, the next book on the list is actually the first book on my chopping block, and that is Action Comics, issue 1033. Action Comics is being written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, and as these titles branch off, it was that PKJ had both titles, and so the stories were kind of intertwined a little bit. But now that uh, Tom Taylor's Superman book is basically taking over that role, I don't know that I need to read action comics to appreciate Superman more. Um, and John Kent is Superman enough for me. I don't necessarily need to follow Clark's adventures. So this book is on the chopping block, but it's got a cover price of $4.99. Um, and I'm just showing you the cover A. Next up is Batman Superman number 20. This is another book that's on the chopping block, reluctantly. I'm really only cutting this book because I just need space in the budget. And I know this series is ending soon. It's just nice, like non-continuity or it doesn't really matter much stories featuring Batman and Superman. It's just a fun book by Gene Lin Yang. Um, but again, if it's a book, if I got to choose between this and, you know, let's say static number two, right, then I'm going to choose static number two. And this is going to have to hit the chopping block. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And I'm just previewing the cover A for you. Next up from DC Comics is Batman Reptilian number two. Batman Reptilian by Garth Ennis uh, with artwork by Liam Sharp, if I'm not mistaken. Um, honestly, I didn't get a chance to read book one, although I loved the cover. But I mean, it's black label Batman. It should be action packed. It should be a little bit darker. And I'm fine for a little bit of darkness in my dark night. Right. So Batman Reptilian number two has got a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting cover A. Next up is Detective Comics 1040, uh, Bruce Wayne behind bars, right? Detective Comics being written by Mariko, Mariko, excuse me, Tamaki, uh, with artwork by Dan Moore. Dan Moore is back on art for this issue. Um, I love this cover, although I think Daredevil 25 did it better a while back. Uh, but Bruce Wayne in jail, we got to figure out why. Obviously, the magistrate has something to do with it. I need to get caught up on Detective Comics because this looks like an interesting arc. Uh, but that's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm just getting cover A. Next up is Infinite Frontier number three. Infinite Frontier, the event being written by Josh Williamson. Honestly, I'm, I'm a big DC fan, so I like to know what's going on with the timeline, the continuity at all times. But I have not jumped into Infinite Frontier just yet, like as, as an event, um, partly because I'm behind and partly because I'm kind of jaded from between Death Metal and uh, uh, Future State. 
I'm just kind of like, eh, another thing to, to get through. But, you know, I, Joshua Williamson is a great writer, so I assume this is going to be exciting once I finally do get into it. Uh, but that's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm just getting cover A. Next up, a uh, book I'm pretty excited for. This is The Other History of the DC Universe, number five. Uh, Other History of the DC Universe, written by John Ridley, uh, with artistic talents by a lot of people. Um, Giuseppe Camoncoli, Andrea Cucci, uh, Marco Villarubia. Um, anyway, or is it Jose? Anyway, there's a bunch of people on this book, um, and it's very exciting. Um, basically, Other History kind of profiles a minority character of a different... Um, you know, background, basically, uh, with each issue. So the first issue focused on Jefferson Pierce, a.k.a. Black Lightning, and the final issue, this week's issue, focuses on his daughter, uh, his daughter, Anissa Pierce, a.k.a. Thunder. Uh, so I'm excited to see how the series wraps. I felt like issue one was really the strongest issue. Um, issues two, three, and four were like, they were good. These didn't quite match up to measure issue one, um, but I'm hoping that issue five really finishes strong. And I think it can, considering the world building we've already got for that character. Um, so that's got a cover price of $6.99. It's a big prestige book, though, and it's got, I'm showing you the cover A. Uh, next up is Robin, number four. Robin at this martial arts tournament. I'm two issues behind on Robin right now, which is really unfortunate. Written by Joshua Williamson. Um, I'm going to keep it up because I love Damian Wayne, although I'd much rather see him in like a Super Sons role or even just in the main Batman title. But beggars can't be choosers, right? So Robin number four has got a cover price of $3.99. I'm just getting cover A. Next up is Strange Adventures number 11. Strange Adventures is a mini series or a maxi series, excuse me, by Tom King. I've been picking it up mostly for the covers. I kind of fell off on issue five. And then I realized around issue seven that it was still on my pull list. And I was like, well, I might as well finish it out. So this is the penultimate issue of the run. I imagine it's pretty good. I just kind of got lost because it was coming out. It wasn't coming out often enough for me to remember the story from issue to issue. But I'm going to read it back to back like a big trade. And I think that'll pay off a lot better. Uh, Strange Adventures has a cover price of $4.99. And I'm just getting cover A. Next up is the last book on my DC Comics chopping block. And that is Teen Titans Academy number five. Honestly, Teen Titans Academy just isn't super appealing to me. I read issue one and I was like, eh, too many characters being introduced. I read issue two and I was just like, I don't know that I care about this plot. Um, and then a month passed, two months passed, and I got behind. My baby girl came home and I forgot the book was even on my pull list. But I think issue five is going to be, it's time to drop it. So that's on the shopping block. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And that was just the cover A that I showed you. Um, now, from DC Comics um, or their imprint, Milestone, uh, one of my favorite lines in comics, we got two books out this week. Now, last week, I thought Static Season 1, Issue 2 was coming out. And so I told you guys that was the book I was most excited for. And then found out uh, DC had actually pushed it back a week so they could coincide with this release. And that is Icon Season 1, Issue Number 1. Icon being written by Reggie Hudlin with artwork by Doug Braithwaite. Um, and honestly, this book is going to be the test of the new Milestone line. I think if this book does well, this is um, this is going to be the litmus test to see if like does Milestone still have that fire, that edge, that thing, right? Because Icon was the issue that really kind of propelled the idea of diversity, not just diversity as, as of as in appearance or as in your social or economic background or ethnic background. Uh, but Icon pushed the idea of having differences or diversity in thought processes with Icon being a more conservative leaning black American, um, which have existed long before, like, you know, the age of Ben Carson and such. But um, so having Icon being a conservative, you know, black man, and then having Rocket to serve as kind of his foil, um, but being a very much liberal and just young new generation person. And the two of them learning from each other and playing off each other. It's very, it's difficult to, um, it's easy to kind of write opposing ideas to the mainstream culture. It's difficult to write opposing ideas within the same book and show validity in each and not be like a caricature or show, portray a caricature of each viewpoint. 
So um, it's going to be a very delicate um, thing to try to repeat. So I'm curious to see if that is really explored in this iteration of Icon. Um, and if it's not, I hope it's just a really good story. There's a nine page preview that DC posted and it feels really cinematic. The artwork is really good. Uh, so I'm just curious to see how, once we get to Icon and Rocket, how that interplay is between those two characters. So I'm really excited for it. Hope Reggie Hudlin does a great job. That's got a cover price of $3.99 and there's a bunch of covers. I'm getting all the covers, but I'm just showing you the cover A. Next up is Static Season 1, Issue Number 2. So Static Season 1, Issue 1, I talked about last week, so I won't go super in detail this week. Um, but Issue 2, I'm really excited about. Um, it's got uh, Season 1, Issue 1 definitely had some twists and, and it had a different take on the character that I don't think most of us were expecting. Um, but it was really exciting. The book felt cinematic. That art by Nick Draper Ivy is just, it just does... It just it really propels the story. Um, so I'm excited to see where it goes from here with it taking such a personal turn at the end of issue one. Uh, so issue two, I pro I assume is going to be really, really good. I'm really excited about it's got a cover price of it of three ninety nine. And I'm just showing you the cover a. And that is my DC Comics pull list. Now, if I buy every book that I just showed you, my books are going to cost me fifty five dollars just from DC. Um, if I cut, if I make the cuts that I was going to make, then that goes down to $42. But as you can see, even with those cuts, I'm already $8 away from my limit for the week, which really sucks. But next up, let's talk about Marvel Comics. So first up from Marvel is Amazing Spider-Man issue 71. We're knee deep in the Sinister War and I dropped Spider-Man and then I didn't drop Spider-Man. Nick Spencer's run is ending in two issues. So I figure I might as well stick around for the ride. And Sinister War looks like an exciting event. I need to read it, but that's that's there. <laughs> so that's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm getting the cover A by Mark Bagley. Next up is another final issue. Uh, this is Cable number 12. Remember last time around, I was talking about Cable, and I was like, I don't know if they resolve the young Cable, old Cable plot line. Well, as you can see from this cover, Old Cable is still around, and I love how this is going to fit with issue 11. But anyway, this is the last issue of Cable, um, and I'm excited to go in and read the books that I've missed since Ten of Swords all back to back and really finish out that Nathan Summers arc. It's got a cover price of $3.99, and I'm getting cover A. Next up is another book that's on the chopping block. This is Sword number seven. Sword, um, honestly, it's a book that I wasn't super familiar with. I picked up issue one, but then issues two and three were both King and Black tie-ins. And so I wasn't really like, I didn't pick it up because I wasn't reading King and Black. Well, I was advised by most of my friends who follow all the X titles, like, yo, you need to pick up Sword. It's really important. And I did read a couple of issues and it was pretty good. Um, but I feel like Sword just keeps getting tied into a bunch of stuff. So this one is a tie into The Last Annihilation, which I don't even know what The Last Annihilation is. Like, I don't if that is that another Marvel event. Is that something that's coming up soon? Like, I really don't know. And because I'm not reading it. Uh, I'm like, do I really need to keep reading this book that just keeps getting thrown into different tie-ins and whatnot? Anyway, for those reasons, Sword is on the chopping block, but it's got a cover price of $3.99. So if you're interested, grab that. Next up from Marvel, the last book on my Marvel pull list is Wolverine issue 14. Uh, Wolverine, one of the coolest things about the Ten of Swords event was this introduction of this character, Solem, to me. Um, just a really conniving and sinister dude who's like unbeatable. And Wolverine also is unbeatable because of that healing factor. So it's cool to see how they play against each other um, and how he's developed. So I'm like two issues behind on Wolverine, but I'm excited to get into this one because of the big bad. So that's got a cover price of $3.99 and I'm just getting the cover A. And that's my Marvel Comics pull list. If I don't, if I pick up uh, Sword number seven, then the full list is going to cost me $16. But if I make that cut, it's just going to cost me 12 so uh, next up, now that we talked about the big two, let's talk about the independent and creator owned books that are coming out this week. So first up, and this is a book that's on the chopping block. It just has to be Department of Truth issue number 11. Department of Truth is on the chopping block because I just haven't gotten to it. I've read issues one through three. And it's like a book just needs to I need to either read the book or drop it. 
is, is how I feel. And I know Department of Truth has been getting five issue trades. So if I drop it at issue 10, then I can just pick up the next trade and I'll, you know, be all good to go. So I've heard it's a great series. I just haven't had the time and it keeps dropping to the bottom of the pull list or the to be read pile. So Department of Truth has got a cover price of $3.99 and that's the cover A. Another book that was going to be on the chopping block, Skybound X number four. Skybound X is a weekly event kind of celebrating the whole Kirkman verse or Skybound universe. I was going to drop this title, but then I found out this one has a backup story uh, where, you know, it's Brandon Thomas and Kyrie Randolph teaming up to bring us another excellence story. Um, and so because I love the excellence series, I'm picking up this book. But this is going to be the last time. And that's got a cover price of $4.99. And I'm going to try to for the cover B, but I'm showing you the cover A. Cover B is by Kari Randolph. Next up is Spawn 320. You're looking at the B cover right now by Todd McFarlane. Um, I haven't been reading Spawn. I just buy it for the artwork and the covers are always great. Um, but this one's got an homage to Amazing Spider-Man issue 316, that epic Spider-Man versus Venom cover. Uh, this time we got Spawn versus, I don't know who that is on the cover, but he's coming at him with a knife and he looks menacing. <laughs> so that's got a cover price of $2.99 and that's reason enough to keep a book on your pull list. It's inexpensive. And like I said, that's the cover B that I'm getting. Next up, there's a book that I'm kind of on the fence about. I don't know if I want to get this or not, but this is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Annual for 2021. This is supposed to be kicking off an event called the Armageddon Game. Um, it appears to be action packed. One name that is not on this book that has been on a lot of Ninja Turtles in the past is Sophie Campbell. She's not writing this issue. She's not drawing this issue. And so I expect it to be a little bit grittier, a little bit more like the, you know, the beginning of the series was. And for those reasons, I'm excited about it, but I'm not excited about this cover price, which is $6.99. $6.99, and I'm just getting the cover A. If I get it, I'm still on the fence. Um, but next up is another book that's on the chopping block. That is Berserker issue number four. Uh, Berserker is another one of those things where it's like I'm not reading the series and it's kind of dropping to the bottom of the pile every time. I bought issue one because of all the Keanu Reeves hype. Um, and honestly, it was good, but it wasn't something that like really grabbed me. It was just like it was cool. It was it was basically Wolverine with no claws is how I felt about it. Um, and I've heard that the series gets better. But again, there are so many books on my pull list. It's just like it doesn't make sense to keep buying books and not reading them. So for those reasons, Berserker is on the chopping block. And that's got a cover price of four ninety, or excuse me, three ninety nine. And I'm just showing you the cover A. So my creator owned books, if I make the cuts that I said I was gonna make, then I'm only paying fifteen dollars. If not, I'm paying 23 so let's talk grand totals if i don't if i buy every book i showed you today my grand total would be 94 dollars, and that's insane that's double my budget so if i make all the cuts that i said i was going to make well then my grand total is just 69 dollars. it's not 50 which is where my budget is but it's not 94 and i can live with that for now we got to keep making these cuts because by august I got to be back to $50 a week. So that's my pull list for the week. What are you getting? I want to know in the comments below. Um, by the way, you should definitely check out our channel sponsors and our channel partners. They are in the description below. And if you want to talk comics with me all the time, then you got to join the K-Squad. That's how you're going to be eligible for exclusive giveaways. By the way, I may have hidden a giveaway prize in one of last week's videos. Probably want to go back and look at those. But anyway... Uh, so join the K-Squad so that you're eligible for exclusive giveaways and you can have fun with us around the clock. I'll see you in another video very soon. Until then, I hope you saw something you liked in this video. If not, that's cool. Uh, you can always buy what you like. Just make sure you read what you buy. And be nice to others. This kindness makes the world go round. Peace.